Hello and welcome everyone. Um, today I'll be explaining you a DP problem. Uh, it's taken from AdCoder Educational DP Contest Problem I Coins. Okay, so let's uh, read the statements. So we're given that n to be a positive odd number so there will be given n coins we're, we're going to be given n coins and number from 1 to n um, now okay so when okay so the coin has two two of the possibilities that it could come either head or tail okay now it comes up heads with probability pi and tails with probability 1 minus pi so we're going to be given an array p with probability of heads we can also find out tails probability uh, by calculating 1 minus pi okay so we have to find uh, okay so someone has tossed all the all the end coins now we have to find the probability of having uh, more heads than tails okay so we need to find the probability uh, having more heads than tails okay so how should you approach this problem one thing for sure that this is a DP problem so uh, so in this sort of cases okay so uh, let's say we could we have two choices right when we toss a coin we always have two choices either it could come head or tail so in a sense, you could build a um, a recursive recursive tree, and by building that tree, you could come up with a solution for that problem. Uh, let's see how could we build that tree. Okay, so let's give it. Uh, let's take a look at the constraints here. N is up to three thousand, and Okay, the probability is always between 0 and 1. So, one thing to notice notice that uh, the values are actually fraction because prob it's probability, it has to be fraction. Um, and it's between 0 and 1. Okay, so they have given us an example here. Uh, look, uh, three probabilities here. Oh, and the answer is 0 0.612. How is that? Um, tossing three coins so the probability could come something like this it could come head 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 or head head tail and permutations of that and uh, the permutations are calculated uh, by this for each and every uh, situation we are calculating this uh, each and every situation's probability by multiplying the outcomes and then finally we're adding all of the possible outcomes where head could be more than tail okay so um, uh, so let's just uh, jump into it okay so how should we build the tree the DPD recursive recursive tree how should, how could we build the tree? You could you could sense it, okay? As we have, let's say we have two choices, right? Uh, let's say we have two choices from here. Either I could move by getting head or by getting tail, okay? So I have two choices to make. Either I'm gonna take head. Or I'm gonna take tail so let's build it okay so from this head we could make another head or maybe a tail this could also happen this could also happen and from this tail also we could get another head or tail right yep also from here Blah, blah 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 so on and so forth okay so it will always come and it will eventually uh, okay let's just draw it finish this tree finish with it let's 
say T is in our head. Head and the tail. Okay. Okay. So we could actually do that using uh, say uh, recursively not using memorizing but that would not fit the time limit okay so let's take a look where does this memorization happens okay now let's say that our n is up to three because we're tossing it three times one two three highest three one two three one two three okay so let's say our n is up to three and we could see and we could sense the possibilities here by building up these three up to n equal to three if n is three uh, what are those possibilities if you if you if you analyze it you will understand that okay we are getting one possibility from here head 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 and head head tail head tail head head tail 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 head head okay so on and so forth but from those other possibilities we can also sense of our condition which is saying to be more heads than tails okay so here we are getting these possibilities okay this is one of the possibilities where head is more than tail this could be the possibility one head head tail head 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 tail okay so you will find all those possibilities here now where is the memorization part okay let's just uh, let's say you have a uh, Okay, let's uh, let's say you've got you've found out. Okay, I'm going from head to head to head. Okay, now I have found one possibility here. Okay, this could be one of the answers. Then I'm uh, from head to head to head. Then I'm going backwards, and then and I'm going here, and I'm also sensing. Um, the possibilities uh, that okay I've got more heads than tails then I'm also getting back and back okay and then I'm going to this uh, this part here, uh, which is tail and from this tail I'm going to, uh, I'm going to this head and I'm I'm actually observing all the patterns through this so let's let's take you to the core code part you'll understand more when i take you to the code part okay i hope you get the intuition let's jump into the code part here again what we did we were just making trying to make a tree okay a recursive tree uh, which may indeed eventually give us the ultimate result by memorizing the values okay so let's uh, let's ch uh, let's check it out what, what we are doing here okay we are first first initializing the DP as minus one as we always do when we do DP sort of problems and we are um, starting our recursive function from here solve function 0 0 n and it is going here okay so I have to I have to mention one thing here my DP's state will be uh, it will be a, there will be two states why there will be two states that's that's a big question because look what we are actually observing we are actually observing each and every coin we have to anyhow we have to toss each and every coin so which value is changing the index value of the array right definitely it is changing so if this has to be changed in any way so this will definitely be a state remember what should be defined um, what should you actually define a state in a DP problem the 
uh, in a recursive function, if you write a recursive function and uh, the variables or the the input that you uh, give on those functions, if they um, if they are not constant enough, or if they change uh, uh, by changing the recursiveness logic, and uh, if those if the variables change by uh, you know by changing the logics, uh, if they repeatedly changes through through it, uh, uh, like uh, like this index, as I'm talking about the array index, as we always have to iterate over all the n because we always have to toss all the n. Okay, so it's not constant enough. It is variable. So this is all. This will be part of the a state, uh, part of the state, um, and another state which is. Uh, which is I'm telling you is uh, uh, okay so another part of the state is uh, the count okay I'm taking only the head count here because I could even take uh, three states but I I actually don't need because if I if I somehow count how many heads uh, I actually witnessed then I can easily count how many tails I've witnessed because uh, I can do this by n minus k so the other state will be how far uh, so uh, yet how f uh, what is the value of my head um, compared to my tail uh, result okay what is the result of my head compared to my tail so this this will store the result of head and compare with the result of tail and the base case would be okay the base case let's let's check the base base case if if i is equal to n i mean if it is indicating the ending of everything i mean the ending of the array then we are going to be looking at two things if yet i mean fulfilling every index i have got a result where head is greater than or equal uh, okay I th okay uh, actually it will be greater than greater than or equal or maybe greater greater actually greater might be uh, fit in more although it's actually saying that n is always odd so it won't matter here you can do both of it equal or not it, it doesn't matter okay so we'll, we're gonna be checking if head count is hit count result is greater than tail count result if it is then we're going to be returning one and if it's if it's not then we're going to be returning zero because we don't need that result that's why we are returning zero because we have to add zero then if you're adding nothing which means we have to add zero and if and we if we have to add that result if we have to keep the keep the result, then we we will always have to use return minus one because we are here. We are for each and every result. We are first multiplying every situation and then we're adding. So to keep this result, this multiplying result, we have to uh, add one. Okay, we have to multiply one uh, to keep that result. And to not keep that result, we're going to be doing just zero. And this is the usual DP part, where if it's um, if that if that value has already came or not. And here is the fun part, the main recursive part, which is okay. I I have two possibilities. Either I could take head or I could get tail. If I get head, what happens? The head counter increases, and the result of the head probability multiplies with the upcoming one okay and this add is for the total result and is for the total result and this multiplies for the situation this situation's result and this k plus one is meaning that okay we've got a head we've got a good result we've got a head so we're going to be um, increasing the k and if if uh, the case if we have got a case where, where we where we get tail then head won't increase and k will be as it was and the result 
of uh, the result will increase as tails probability okay so tails probability they have already told us that tails probability is 1 minus heads probability 1 minus the array which is going to be multiplying by this so uh, this are this is the two recursive uh, ways where so uh, sorry uh, this uh, this is the two recursive uh, recursive uh, logic that we could make we have, because we have got only two choices to make either I'm gonna go for head or I'm gonna go for tail if I go for tail I will count the head head counter and if I go for head I'll count the head, uh, I will increase the head counter and finally after the end of everything okay ending and the finishing line we're gonna be checking whether head is head result is greater than tail result and we're going to be returning one otherwise we're going to be returning zero so this is how we're going to be solving this problem i hope you get the intuition here and so that's it that's it then uh, till next time uh, goodbye